Welcome back. We've gone over a variety of commands to change our controls via external devices, and one of the most common commands is to poll a control's status. If you frequently need to poll a lot of controls, you'll be interested in using change groups and change group scheduling. One of the most frequent tech support questions we get is about how to use these features, and it's one of the main reasons we decided to make this video. Once we've taken you through this, creating change groups and scheduling them will be perfectly clear. To keep this example as simple as possible, we'll continue with our current design in emulation mode and issue commands using our Telnet session. First, we need to create a change group, which will let us efficiently pull the values of both the gain and mute controls. We'll use the CGC1 command, or change group create. We're labeling this change group as the number one. You could use any positive number of virtually any length, but only four change groups can be created per remote session, so the number one will work fine. When you hit enter, the change group is created, even though you won't receive a response. Next, let's add some controls into this change group. We'll use the CGA command, or change group add. Type CGA space one space gain gain and press enter, and CGA space one space gain mute and press enter. Once again, there is no response to these commands, but you have successfully added controls to your change group. Now, we can poll the change group to find out what all of its controls are currently set to. Type CGP space one, or change group poll one, and press enter. You'll get a list of the control value responses for all controls within the group. This is what always happens the first time you issue a change group poll on a change group. You will also see CGPA, which means change group poll acknowledge. Depending on how you're using the data from this poll, parsing these acknowledgements may be burdensome. So there's an alternative called CGPNA, or change group poll no ACK. This gives you the same control values, but doesn't include the CGPA acknowledgement. But wait, not only did we not get that CGPA, we didn't get any control values at all. Why? Well, this is a good time to explain how change groups work internally. When you add controls to a change group, they are marked internally as dirty controls, meaning that they have not yet reported their current status. Once a polling response occurs, every control is marked as a clean control and won't report its value again when the next poll is requested. Only if someone changes the control, either within QSIS or via an external control method, will the control be considered dirty again. Let's go back to Designer and move the knob to a different setting. Now go back to the Telnet session and type CGPNA space one and enter. We see the control value for the gain control, but not the mute button. This is because the gain became dirty when we changed it, yet the mute button is still clean. And now that the gain control value has been reported, it's clean again too. So change groups make it easy to pull a few dozens or hundreds of controls with a single command. But what if you need to have QSIS automatically send updates out without being sent those poll commands? That's the purpose of change group schedules. A change group schedule is basically a timer that tells QSIS to automatically issue a change group poll command to itself and then return the results to you. This command is called CGS, or change group schedule. But this command also adds that poll acknowledgement response each time the timer expires. You don't want to receive a CGPA report every 100 milliseconds, so we recommend using the change group schedule no ACK command instead, or CGSNA. We're going to poll change group one, and we just need to tell QSIS how often we want to receive an update on this group. We'll enter 100 for 100 milliseconds. This can be set as low as 30 milliseconds or as high as you want. A value of 5,000 would represent five seconds. As the programmer of the system, only you will know what to make this value. Your control system processor might be a little slow, and you need updates to come less frequently. Or your system could be perfectly capable of receiving anything QSIS can throw at it, and you can choose the minimum of 30 milliseconds. It's up to you, and you can change the polling interval at any time, even after the schedule is already running. All right, let's press enter to launch this command. You won't receive a response, but it worked. You'll see that any changes to the controls within QSIS is reflected by CV updates reported by the protocol. These updates will continue to occur whenever any member control of the change group changes, until the TCP socket connection is broken or you destroy the change group. 
The reason you might want to use multiple change groups is for when you want to pull different types of controls differently. You might not want to pull all controls at the same frequency. You might want to pull a meter value every 250 milliseconds, while you might only want to pull a soft phone ringing LED every second or two. For those types of needs, just put your controls into different change groups and then set different schedules for each change group. Now, if you would like to mark all change group controls as dirty and therefore receive the complete list on the next poll interval, use the change group invalidate command with the change group's ID. The command for that is, you guessed it, CGI. Since our change group schedule is running, you'll receive a list of the current values of all controls in the change group. One other topic that should be mentioned is that you can restrict access to this protocol using the QSIS administrator. As long as you have multiple users set up in the administrator, you can require that an external control inputs a PIN matching a user account that has external control privileges. Here I have disabled external control access on the default guest account and added an admin account with the PIN 1234. I'll save this change, which will take effect upon the next new connection from a client. Here, I have opened a new Telnet session to my emulated design on port 1702. We can type status get and receive the expected response, but if we try to change a control, let's use control set value space gain gain space zero and press enter. Ah, doing anything of substance now requires logging in via an account pin number. I can type login space admin space 1234 and press enter and it tells me I am successful. Now I can perform all the usual tasks as that login is maintained until the TCP socket is disconnected. Let's try our control change again, CSV gain gain zero and success. One last thing to keep in mind that we mentioned earlier, ECP will time out and close the TCP socket after 60 seconds of inactivity. It would be good practice to create a program within your third party controller that issues a simple command such as status get every 50 seconds to prevent the port from closing. So that's it for external control. You now have all the tools to control QSIS from the outside and make it do your bidding like your own personal Puppet? Hey! Hey, that's not very funny. I thought it was funny. Oh, I think your beard is funny. I know.